it's early in the morning and we are just pulling into the port of Citta Vecchia, which is the port outside of Rome. And from here, we will take a bus into Rome to do the tours there. But it's at day, daylight, daybreak, and it's really pretty. Uh, Barberini and uh, uh, Michelangelo and uh, uh, Donato Bramante. Have a look to the right. You see a fountain built again in uh, limestone, uh, cavity in limestone, by Luigi Van Vitelli, a very important painter and architect of the 1700s. Uh, oh, and now we're about to drive through the uh, ruins of the ancient Roman dock built in the second century by um, oh, wow. uh, Trajan, the Roman Emperor Trajan. Today, this part is the fifth part to meet our local guides by driving. Just after this traffic light, they are waiting for us right that we can admire today. If you have a quick look through the columns, you will be able to see the statue depicting the uh, saint himself, Saint Paul, holding the um, instrument of his mart martyrdom, the sword. And on top, a beautiful golden mosaic representing Jesus and the the prophets, one, two, three, and four prophets. Have a look to the right, you see the beautiful golden mosaic. Here we are. I press the puck to our local guys. Thanks for your uh, attention. And uh, uh, gilded bronze dolphins, seven were the laps around the central point, and the seven. This is the circus maximum. Wow. The seven dolphins were just. Uh, counting uh, the laps uh, around uh, the uh, central spine. <laughs> so, left we see remains of uh, the Circus uh, Maximum. According to historians, uh, the Circus Maximum called uh, half something like 250,000 Constanzo the second who took it here and placed it really in the Circus Maximus. It has been there before, and it, it's the oldest of the obelisks. It's from the from 1,500 years before Christ. Dedicated it was in Karnak to Tutmosis II's obelisk, 
Also on the right hand side you see the side of the third biggest Basilica of Rome, but it's also the Cathedral of Rome, St. John in the Lateran. And in front of you, you have a building with two, two doors. The right hand door and leads up to this. It was where Jesus went up to be judged by Pontius Pilatus. Now on the right hand side is beautiful St. John in the Lateran. Lateran, the face that is from the beginning of the 1700s, it's a, a late Baroque faced by Alessandro Galilei. This, this basilica has been the most fort unfortunate maybe here in Rome. Earthquakes have destroyed it. Lots of fires, tornadoes, hit by lightning. It is a collage of different building, building um, styles because it has been re restored so many times. Before 1307, this was a place where the popes lived. This was where uh, the popes had their palaces. Then due to internal uh, difficulties and restlessness, the Pope will go to Avignon in France, not return before 1377. It will even take some longer. And then this old zone is in a terrible state. It's in so bad condition that the pontiff's center will become the Vatican of today. We will see then the Sistine Chapel that was built in the end of the 1400s. So, uh, the power pole where the popes will reside is moved away from here and to where... Okay, now we're at the Trevi Fountain. There's a lot of people at the Trevi Fountain. Beautiful. Eight years younger than the Colosseum, but the fact it became a church saved it a lot. And so we know what a Roman temple looked like. Of course, there have been marble slabs that have disappeared a little bit, but we can see this wonderful Roman temple. This written by Agrippa the Great. Agrippa was the man who who built the water aqueduct to take water to that cave. Agrippa built a first phantom, it burned down. Domitian built another and it burned down. Emperor Hadrian built the third phantom, it's this. And it is still here. Now ladies and gentlemen, I give the microphone to John. Oh, we just go. <laughs> Okay. Please bring with you. We just arrived at Vatican City. It's a rare to find a bronze decoration as the most of them they get melted by the barbarians. Like happened to the Colossus. Vatican Square.